This is a forest in the Styx and Florentine valleys of southern Tasmania. I call it a paper forest. A forest which has stood in isolation for 10,000 years. A forest which has felt the distant rumblings of glaciers and the red-throated roar of bushfire. Here stand the world's tallest hardwoods, swamp gum, gum top and stringy bark, topping 250 feet and up to 400 years old. In this 450,000 acre domain, I'm a forester for the Australian newsprint mills. A mill that needs 1,200 tonnes of logs a day. over 200 miles of logging roads in this valley and with a load of 50 tons I've got an hour more. Roads that cut through swamps and hillsides and have passed by areas of new trees, the forest to be harvested in another 50 years. Depot in sight, it's under the log wash to clean the last of the forest mud. I suppose you could say me and me mates are the cleanest blokes on the job. Two or maybe three showers a day. The log loader is really an overgrown forklift truck. It's powered by a 450 horsepower diesel and it can handle 45 tonnes at one lift.
Pulled by two engines, the Tasmanian Railways take the logs 37 miles to the Boyer Mill. release on paper production. The Boyer paper mill is situated on the Lower Derwent River, 22 miles upstream from Hobart. Australian newsprint mills were the first in the world to manufacture newsprint from hardwoods. The industry is staffed by Australians using Australian raw materials. Over 700 of Australian newsprint mills, 1400 employees live in company townships. The firm provides modern five-room houses and the townships have all amenities, including community halls and sporting facilities. Since its inception in 1941, Boyer Mill has continually expanded its operation. Between 1965 and 1968, the company spent approximately $26 million to install a third paper-making machine with extensive additions to services stores pulp making processes and logging equipment. All development has been due initially to pioneer research and technical development by company staff. This research team was formed from the research staff of the Derwent Valley Paper Company, the forerunner of Australian newsprint mills. In those days, the troubles were mainly poor strength and paper colour which was a light brown. Since 1941, major breakthroughs include a new groundwood production and brightening process and a pressure impregnation groundwood pulping system for young regrowth timber. It's these processes which enable newsprint to be made from Australian eucalypts with brightness, strength and printing properties equal to any in the world. Research is never ending. Even now we're working progressively to enable newsprint to be made at higher speed and with even better printing properties.
The semi-chemical cold soda plant uses four-foot billets from the wood mill as well as some sassafras and myrtle. The billets are first chipped to half-inch length. Natural acids are removed by steaming and compressing. Then the chips are expanded to absorb caustic soda. Pulped in refiners in two stages, bleached, washed and refined again, the pulp is reduced to single fibres. The second new method of making pulp involves young regrowth eucalypt which is taken in special trucks to a pressure vessel. Thirteen bundles of wood representing about eight and a half tons of fibre have dilute caustic forced into them at 600 pounds per square inch. The treated wood is then reduced to fibres by grinding. The major component is groundwood made by forcing the billets against a five feet diameter abrasive grindstone where it's showered with dilute caustic. The latest grinders used at Boyer operate two in tandem, driven by 7,000 horsepower motors. At this stage, all the pulp is washed on vacuum filters, brightened with zinc hydrosulfite, washed again, then screened and cycloned to remove dirt. The remaining component is long fiber pulp, imported from New Zealand and refined and bleached at Boyer. This represents 17% of the total raw materials. All three pulps are finally mixed together and fed into the paper making machine. Deloitte Wormsley the biggest paper machine manufacturers in the world built Boyer's latest machine in Great Britain. The specifications called for a machine which could produce 110,000 tonnes of newsprint annually, running at 2,500 feet per minute. The installation of such a machine is a complex operation in itself. Despite its size, many of the adjustments are as fine, on a comparative basis, as assembling an expensive watch. The new machine is one of three, which together will have an ultimate capacity of over 200,000 tonnes a year. Three machines and other equipment will have a total power requirement of 52,000 horsepower. They'll need 140 million gallons of water every week and 245,000 pounds of steam an hour. The dimensions of the machine are also quite impressive. It has an all-up weight of 2,500 tonnes, is 28 feet wide, 
extends over 390 feet and is as high as a four-storey building. And once you have it tuned, there's the big question, will it go? Stock suspension is just 0.6% wood and 99.4% water when it comes out of the pressure head box. The idea is to almost completely dewater this mixture until it becomes newsprint. At the first stage, the suspension flows onto the forming wire, a 68 mesh screen similar to a conveyor belt. The wire is supported by a series of table rolls. The suspension passes over a group of suction boxes and finally what is known as a cooch suction roll. By this time it's sufficiently dewatered for the wet sheet to be picked up by vacuum from the wire and transferred into the pressing section on a felt. In this stage the moisture content is reduced to about 60% as the fibre mat passes through a series of ringer-like presses. More moisture is removed as the sheet passes over 48 steam heated drying cylinders and so it goes on until the moisture is 7%. The calendar stack consists of a number of highly polished steel rollers. This puts pressure on the bulky sheet until it's reduced to newsprint as we know it. The finished sheet, 22 feet wide, is wound into reels up to 7 feet in diameter and weighing over 15 tonnes. The parent reel is transferred by an overhead crane to a slitting and winding unit where it's cut into a number of smaller reels ranging from 30 to 74 inches wide as required by newspaper press rooms. A mill that needs 1,200 tonnes of logs a day. I suppose you could say me and me mates are the cleanest blokes on the job. Australian newsprint mills were the first in the world to manufacture newsprint from hardwoods. Research is never ending. The specifications called for a machine which could produce 110,000 tonnes of newsprint annually, running at 2,500 feet per minute. <laughs> 